The Mahjong A3 is the third retractable fountain pen made by Moonman, also known as Mahjong, and this is the first of the three to actually be branded Mahjong. The A1 was heavily inspired by the Pilot Vanishing Point, and we'll do a direct comparison of this with those two models in just a moment. Next, the Moonman A2 was released, which is heavily inspired by a vintage vanishing point that's made out of plastic with vertical facets. And this one closes out the trilogy with the Pilot Vanishing Point LS being its design inspiration. LS standing for luxury and silent. The pen is currently offered in black as well as white that we see here today and trim that can either be chrome or the matte black that we have here today. At the back of the pen, we have a long button that you use to extend the nib. Pushing the button down will extend the nib in the front and also rotate this back dial. And then in order to retract the nib back into the pen, give that dial a twist. The dial has vertical ribs that give you good grip, as well as one flange to show you the position of the nib. When the nib is fully retracted, it's nicely in line with the Mahjong brand. And when the nib is extended, it's in line with the top of the nib as well as the clip. This has a gradual taper that brings you to the back barrel, which again has Mahjong written in cursive and nothing on the back. We then have a recessed cap band, which reads Mahjong. And inside this cap band, we can see the tip of the clip which is pretty difficult to get to, but when you are able to get underneath it, it is a functional clip that's quite springy. The clip is friction fit, and you can see that tension break in the back. This has two functions. Not only does it help hold the clip onto the pen, but it also acts as a nice roll stop. So when you have the pen sitting on the table, it's nicely presented to you. The top barrel has a gradual taper down to a matte black nose cone. And in the hand, the pen is heavy and pretty well back weighted when the nib is retracted. But when you extend the nib forward, the center of gravity transfers to about the middle of the pen and it becomes a comfortable pen for short notes. For long writing sessions, it is also comfortable, although it can be a little bit difficult to grasp because you don't have the anchor that you typically see with the Pilot Vanishing Point. In terms of size comparisons, here's the Mahjong A3, a typical Pilot G2 rollerball pen, and your standard Sharpie. Before we get into the disassembly of the Mahjong A3, I wanted to take a moment here to compare it with two other fountain pens. Originally, I was planning to compare this with the Pilot Vanishing Point LS. Unfortunately, the seller that I purchased it from ran out of stock, so I'm hoping to maybe post an update in the future where I do a direct comparison. But for today, we have the Pilot Vanishing Point. This is the current modern version that's in all black, but it is available in other colors. And down below, we have the Moonman A1, which is the predecessor to the A2 and the A3 that we're looking at today. The A1 was offered in many different colors. I have this one in matte black, and it was also offered with a clip very similar to the Pilot Vanishing Point or an option without the clip, which is what I have here today in which case they removed the clip from the front barrel and introduced a roll stop to the back. We can see in the cap position, all three pens are widely similar in overall length. The A3 is just a little bit longer, and the A3 is also a little bit wider than either of the other two pens. Let's take a look at these pens with their nibs extended. All three nibs click to extend, and in the extended view, all three pens are about the same overall length. It's also important to note, this is where we can see a difference in the models. The Mahjong A3 is supposed to be quieter when you're extending and retracting the nib than either of the others. And let me uh, reduce the sound on the background music so you can hear that right now. Here's the Moonman A1. Pilot Vanishing Point. and the A3. You can see it is significantly quieter. And I know in the Japanese culture, there is a big emphasis on being polite and courteous to others. 
And I think that's largely where the LS version of the Vanishing Point uh, has its market. Uh, and I would say the same for this Moonman A3. It is significantly quieter than either of these other two pens. I don't personally find the clicking sound on these pens overly obnoxious or loud, but it is a nice feature to have. I also really like that you can extend and retract the nib just by rotating this, which further reduces the sound. Disassembling the Mahjong A3, the back barrel unscrews from the front. And this back barrel contains the knocking mechanism. It's pretty difficult to disassemble, so I wouldn't recommend doing it, but it is interesting to watch it operate without the pen installed. Um, there is a little sleeve that moves in and out, and that sleeve goes over the cartridge or converter that you have installed. The nib unit pulls right out of the front barrel. And here we can see the nib unit is completely unchanged from the Moonman A1 and A3. Uh, if we look closely, the nib is still an extra fine, and that's the only offering that we have, and it's still branded Moonman. The converter pulls right out. And that's it for the nib and feed unit. I don't recommend disassembling this further because the feed is very fragile. So for cleaning, I would just soak it in warm soapy water or flush it with a bulb syringe. If you wanna disassemble the converter further, you can unscrew the sleeve, and that comes out the back, and then you can pull the piston unit out, and you have the housing as well. And then lastly, we have the front of the pen. Um, it's pretty difficult to remove the spring and the latch mechanism that we have in the front, so I would leave those in place. But if you want, you can take off this clip. All you do is slide it towards the front nose cone. And at this point, the pen is fully disassembled. To reassemble, I'm gonna start with the converter. We'll grab our piston and our uh, sleeve, which slides right over. And then we'll screw down the metal sleeve onto the back of this. And just like that, we have a fully functional piston inside the converter. The nib and feed haven't been disassembled, so we're gonna just push the converter onto that, and then that goes into the front barrel. On the back of the nib unit, there is a little notch, which lines up with a slot that's on this front barrel. Uh, unfortunately, the spring is a little bit too stiff. It does hold the notch proud of that slot, which was an issue I also saw on the A1, and an issue that the vanishing point does not have. So that's a little bit disappointing that that hasn't been addressed. Hold uh, that in place and you can screw on the back barrel. And at this point, the pen is fully functional and could be inked up if you did not want to use the clip. Um, without the clip, there is a little rib on the front barrel and that rib doesn't really serve a purpose without the clip. Although I guess technically it's a roll stop, um, which is pretty functional. Uh, also, this back dial functions as a roll stop with this extra flange, too. If you do want to reinstall the clip, slide it over the front barrel. And if we look closely, there is a little um, slot in the front, which lines up to the rib. So you just push it right over that rib, and it should line right in place. And now the clip is functional and the pen is ready to be inked up. Inking up the Mahjong A3, today I selected Diamine's Majestic Blue, which is a deep blue that has a bit of red sheen to it. Take the cap off the bottle, remove the back barrel, pull out our nib unit. Make sure the piston is extended all the way down. Submerge the nib into the ink and screw up the piston. In order to get a full fill, I'm gonna extend the piston back down and then draw it back up. It is very challenging to get full fills with pilot converters. Um, and this one is no different. 
actually looks like. I have shown you another issue with this pen, which is it's hard to get the nib um, all the way down into the bottle. Let me try that one more time. Um, it is a very long nib and the inlet for the ink is at the top here. So let's just go all the way down. If you do want to get a full fill with a pilot converter, you need to um, hold the nib vertically and expel air. But I'm getting some ink in this, so uh, I'm happy with that for now. And I already have an inky finger from doing this. Um, so not my favorite system, unfortunately. But we do have ink in our converter. In hindsight, I would probably say that eyedropper in a cartridge is your best bet, not only for ink capacity, but also to be able to see your ink level. You can see that there isn't that much visible from here. Um, so I wiped off the excess ink. We'll put our nib unit back into the front of our pen and then attach our knocking mechanism to the back. And now we're ready to write. Okay, writing with the Mahjong A3, depress the button to extend the nib. And here we're writing with a stainless steel extra fine. And this nib is very well tuned. However, unfortunately, it didn't start out this way. When I first got this pen, I found the nib extremely scratchy and very dry. Um, but I took some brass shims and flossed this nib to spread the tines out. And then I also used some micro mesh to polish up the tipping material a little bit more. And I have a whole video about nib tuning that I'll include in this, um, in this video as well. Our ink. is diamine majestic blue for flex i'll turn the page No real flex to be had with this pen, which isn't surprising. Not only is it a stainless steel nib, it's very small, and I would consider this one a semi-hooded nib for reverse writing. Really not getting anything out of it. Um, I, as I mentioned, I did tune this nib, but even when I first got it out of the box, it was not much of a reverse writer. So not something that I would personally expect. So you're pretty much stuck with one line width and uh, that's okay. I think that's suitable for this style pen, which is pretty much a note taker. So what do I think of the Mahjong A3? I like many aspects of this pen. I think that it has a very striking design that you don't see very often in the fountain pen market, especially in this high contrast white and matte black finish. I like the Mahjong logo. I think that the uh, way that they branded this pen is quite unique and it doesn't take away from the pen, but adds a little bit of character. And from an engineering standpoint, it's kind of a fun pen to tinker with. You can hear the gears rotate as you rotate this dial. So that's pretty cool. It's also a great pen for note taking since you do have that quick button to extend the nib and the quick flick to retract it back in. I do find it's a little bit of a fidget toy in that respect. The flap that seals off the nib is fairly effective. Um, with the pilot vanishing point, I can go easily over a month and not have any hard starts, 
With this pen, if I have it capped for about two weeks, I do find I started having some hard starts. So that's maybe a little bit disappointing. And I guess that probably brings us into areas that this pen could be improved. First off, I would say is the clip. I like the position of this clip. I think that it's a uh, unique placement in that you still have a clip and it acts as a uh, both a roll stop on the back as well as a guide for where the top of your nib is. And I think it's smart to place it there because there are a lot of people that hesitate away from the vanishing point due to the placement of the clip being where you grip the pen. Um, but I also find after using the vanishing point that I kind of miss that placement. That clip at the front gives you a nice anchor on the pilot vanishing point. And I don't feel like the pen is gonna slip away. It does take a little bit of getting used to to um, kind of reposition your grip and have a comfortable writing experience. <clears throat> the issue that I have with this one, um, and I didn't see it so much with the Moonman A1, is that the material, it's a brass with a lacquered finish, it's very slippery. So I find during note taking, it's perfectly comfortable, but if I'm holding this pen for extended periods, my fingers tend to slip around and I find that I'm either gripping this pen extremely hard and kind of white knuckling it to maintain a position, or my hand is kind of moving up and down and f trying to find a more comfortable uh, way to hold the pen. I didn't have that issue with the Moonman A1, and I think the main reason is because I have it in this uh, matte black finish, which has a little bit more of a texture to it that provides some grip. So I think it would be wise for Mahjong to consider um, introducing a matte black version of this pen. Either that or introducing some sort of texture to this front end to help improve your grip. The clip is also um, not the most functional in the world. The fact that the tip of it sits inside this recess makes it really hard to access. That and the fact that the whole clip slides right out means that while you're trying to access it, you might accidentally push it up. And that is also an issue that I found on the Caveco Sport. The, this clip is optional, but similarly, if you push this uh, clip instead of pull it, it will slide off the pen. Um, a pretty easy remedy for that, let me see if I can get this back on, you have to lift the clip over that rib and then slide it in place. There you go. A pretty easy remedy for that would be to add some extra material past this hinge point so you could actually hinge it from the back with a rocker style clip. In terms of how this compares with the Pilot Vanishing Point LS, um, in terms of copying, I think that they did copy a lot of the mechanisms as well as the nib unit, which we saw with the A1. They're uh, virtually interchangeable. However, from watching videos with the Pilot Vanishing Point LS, one of the major differences that I've seen is there appears to be a damper on the back. So when you're trying to retract the nib back in, the LS will slowly extend back in a nice smooth motion, whereas this one doesn't seem to have a damper. It just flicks right back. So that's probably a corner that was cut in order to save cost, but that's just, you know, my best guess. And then I guess the only other thing too would be what they did with the nib unit. Um, I think that there's a lot of room to be improved by this and Pilot with their proprietary cartridges and converters, their hands are a little bit tied with what they can do. Um, but Mahjong could have started from scratch and had a international standard cartridge instead of the Pilot style cartridge and converter. I think that would have been a great improvement. Um, furthermore, there could have been a better way to hold the converter so that you can see the ink level more clearly. This uh, ink window is not the most functional in the world. And then lastly, as we saw during the inking up portion, the amount that you need to extend this into a bottle of ink is pretty long. Um, this is a really long nib and the inlet for the ink is all the way back here. 
So I think it would have been nice if uh, Mahjong took this as an opportunity to maybe reduce the size of this nib or redesign the feet a little bit so that the inlet was a little bit closer to the tip. But besides all of that, I think it's a uh, pretty unique pen. There aren't many pens out there that have this sort of um, click and retraction mechanism, the Vanishing Point LS being the only one that I'm aware of. And it's a quick note taker and a great note taker. Again, the nib unfortunately did require some tuning. That's another thing to consider, but at this price point for this level of design and engineering, I think that's kind of fair game. That being said, I would like to see Mahjong maybe introduce fines and medium sized nibs and not just the extra fine that we see here. So a fun pen, a great pen for quick note taking, as well as a great one to fidget with, and in my opinion, a pretty handsome pen. And that just leaves me to say, Thank you for watching.